For centuries, Christian missionaries have poured through the Hebrew scriptures to find out of context sound bites that seem to allude to Jesus. Virtually none of these references are genuine messianic prophecies, but I'd like to look at one tonight that is featured in the Gospels that actually is a passage about the coming Messiah. It's from the prophet Zechariah, Zechariah chapter 9, verse 9. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout for joy, O daughter of Jerusalem. For behold, your king will come to you, righteous and victorious is he, a humble man, riding on a donkey, on a foal, a calf of she-donkeys. Now missionaries make a huge deal out of the fact that Jesus rode on a donkey. Of course, 2,000 years ago, that was a very common form of transportation. And it probably would have been very difficult to find someone living at that time who actually never rode on a donkey. But the extremely narrow focus of the New Testament ignores the most critical parts of this prophecy, which are it's speaking of a victorious king, not focusing on the fact that he might be riding on a donkey. The problems obviously are immense in terms of the Christian understanding because number one, Jesus was never a king that reigned in Israel. Despite all the pious insistence of the church, Jesus was never a reigning, ruling king of the Jewish people. And secondly, he was never victorious. Now, what does this mean? So, we will see in the continuation of this prophecy from Zechariah in the very next verse what the prophet is actually saying. He writes, I will cut off any battle chariot from Ephraim and any war horse from Jerusalem, and the bow of warfare will be eliminated, and he will speak peace to the nations, and his dominion will be from the sea to the west and from the river to the ends of the earth. Now, this passage is corroborated by many other critical messianic prophecies, such as Isaiah chapter 11 and Micha chapter 4, which teach that there will be universal peace during the reign of Messiah. And clearly, Jesus accomplished none of this. But it's interesting that the New Testament is very confused when it tries to apply this prophecy from the prophet Zechariah to the life of Jesus. For example, in the Synoptic Gospels, which is Matthew, Mark, and Luke, it states that Jesus sent two of his disciples to a village opposite the Mount of Olives in order to bring him the animal that he would then ride into Jerusalem. However, the Gospel of John insists that Jesus found the animal by himself. Well, it can't be both of these stories. But what's even more strange is that there is something bizarre that emerges from the gospel narrative itself. In Mark, Luke, and John, each describe how Jesus rode into Jerusalem on an ass. Matthew, Matthew however, seems to misunderstand the biblical parallelism from Zechariah and he constructs his narrative with Jesus awkwardly and clumsily riding into Jerusalem on the back of two animals simultaneously. Matthew writes, Jesus said to them, Go into the village opposite, and you will find a she-ass tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. Now this took place so that what was spoken through the prophet might be fulfilled, saying, Say to the daughter of Zion, Behold, your king is coming to you, gentle, and mounted upon a she-ass, and upon a colt, the foal of a beast of burden. And so the disciples went and did as Jesus had instructed them. 
and brought the Shias and the colt and put garments upon them and he sat upon them. Now this absurd scene where Jesus is riding upon two different sized animals at once is the unfortunate result of Matthew misconstruing his narrative based upon his misreading of the actual text in Zechariah, which makes use of a common biblical style of parallel repetition of the same idea. Zechariah was not speaking about the king of Israel coming into Jerusalem riding on two animals. It just describes the king coming on one animal, but describes that animal in two different ways, which is a very common style of the Hebrew scriptures.